Hello and welcome to The Daily Space. I am your host, Dr. Pamela Gay. And I am your host, Beth Johnson. And we are here to put science in your brain. If things seem a bit out of sorts today, it's because the episode we planned last night had to be largely tossed out the window due to large breaking science news. This doesn't happen very often to us, but well, a pair of black holes were caught eating a pair of neutron stars, and this is kind of the astronomical equivalent of if it bleeds, it leads. We'll be dedicating our second segment of the show to that event. For now, let's visit a few of today's planned stories. My senior year of high school, back before I really knew volcanoes would one day play a huge role in my life, Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines. This explosive eruption came from a previously non-threatening and very eroded volcano that was covered in dense forests and, unfortunately, a whole lot of humans. While highly memorable, this massive eruption has nothing on the long-term danger posed by nearby Indonesian volcanoes. Merapi, on the island of Java in particular, tends to explode more like a high school science project than the gentle oozing volcanoes we see in Hawaii and often in Iceland. Researchers looked at the chemical mix of tiny minerals formed in the lava to understand what exactly makes Merapi so explosive, and the answer is carbon dioxide gas. According to Valentin Troll, a co-author on the study, Merapi's magma interacts intensively with Earth's crust before erupting. That's highly important because when magma reacts with, for instance, the limestone that's found in central Java right under the volcano, the magma becomes full to bursting with carbon dioxide and water, and the eruptions get more explosive. For those of you who may not have made fake volcanoes in school, the mix of vinegar and baking soda that is used produces carbon dioxide and water. Exactly what is in this volcano. The thing is, in the volcano it's mixed with molten rock instead of red food coloring. The horrible chemical reaction is thanks to that composition. There are place-to-place -place variations in the Earth's mantle where magma originates and in the Earth's crust, which the magma travels through. Beneath Java is the chemistry of explosive volcanism. Understanding what's going on won't bring back the lives lost to Merapi, but hopefully will help us understand what future behavior to expect. This work appears in Nature Communications and was led by Francis Deegan. From exploding volcanoes, we now turn to exploding stars. In looking at the ways in which stars die, there are two basic scenarios. Stars like our sun eventually just sort of peter out as they run out of fuel in their core and stop creating energy via nuclear reactions. The light those reactions had been producing had been supporting the star against collapse under its own gravity. But in the absence of light, that core in these smaller stars will collapse into a tiny moon-sized white dwarf star, while the remaining atmosphere, if there is any left, it drifts away. This is how the majority of stars will die. In a few instances, however, the collapsing core is so massive that instead of just hunkering down into a smaller object, it also explodes. This can happen in a couple of different ways. If you pile a bunch of extra matter from a nearby star onto an already collapsed white dwarf, it will explode as a type 1a supernova. If you have a truly giant star greater than 10 solar masses in size, it will collapse and the core will become either a neutron star, a black hole, or nothing but energy as things around it explode in the collapse. Now we are learning a theory on a third way for stars to die may be true and may be able to explain the death of the star that formed the Crab Nebula. This third form of death is electron capture collapse. Elderly red super asymptotic giant branch stars can reach a point where they stop having nuclear reactions and their core starts to collapse. And the ionized oxygen, neon, and magnesium grab onto all the free electrons and suddenly get tiny by forming atoms. This is the atomic difference between everyone taking their own car to work and taking a rideshare. 
As soon as all those particles combine, they take up a whole lot less space, and infalling material around them, it ends up going supernova. While theories about this kind of explosion had existed for a long time, including theories that explain Chinese observations of the Crab Nebula's birth in 1054, modern observations didn't exist until now. In 2018, a weird supernova whose progenitor star was observed to be a super asymptotic giant branch star in surveys was seen to explode. Careful observations of how that explosion evolved over time matched the ele electron capture supernova theories, and also taught us there are apparently more than two ways to explode a star. This work appears in Nature Astronomy and was led by Dachi Hiramutsu. Super asymptotic giant branch stars. I want Pamela to say that 10 times fast. While not actually explosive, our third story somewhat continues our theme. While using the new Kiop Space Telescope to study a known planet orbiting the star Nu to Lupi, a weird dip in brightness was observed that could only be one thing, an additional planet. Okay, it could have been a whole lot of things, but by using archival data of this star system, researchers were able to determine that a third star, third planet in the system had photobombed their images of the second planet. This planet has a roughly 107 day orbit and is at a distance from its star where we are only beginning to find planets. The system is less than 50 light years away and with telescopes like Hubble and one day JWST, we may be able to measure all these worlds' atmospheres. According to Kiop's project scientist, Kate Isaac, while none of these planets would be habitable, their diversity makes the system even more exciting and a great future prospect for testing how these bodies form and change over time. There is also the potential to search for rings or moons in the new two, two Lupi system, as the exquisite precision and stability of Kiops could allow detection of bodies down to roughly the size of Mars. This work appears in Nature Astronomy and was led by Letitia Del Rez. After the break, we'll be back to talk about hungry black holes and how they shook the space-time continuum eating their dinner. Stay tuned. Continuing our theme of destructive destruction, we'd like to introduce you to GW 200105 and GW 200115. These two gravitational wave detections, just 10 days apart, originated from the mergers of pairs of black holes and neutron stars. Detected by the LIGO and Virgo detectors, these discoveries allow astronomers to essentially lay down a royal flush of detections. In September 2015, LIGO and Virgo made their first observations of a pair of black holes merging and sending gravitational waves rippling through the universe, where they would be detected as oscillations in the space between detectors as space literally expanded and contracted in reaction to this event. Just like different bells produce different kinds of sounds, and you can measure the size of a bottle by the kind of sound it makes when blown into, the size of merging objects can be measured by the gravitational waves they make in the space-time continuum. Yes, folks, you, like the detectors, expand and contract by ever so small an amount as these waves pass through you. These waves are tiny and comparable to the size of a particle, not to the size of a person, and we'll never notice them with our senses. And it is frankly amazing we can detect them at all. I have to admit, I didn't think we'd be able to ever make these detections from Earth, but determined scientists and engineers have a habit of finding a way. From that first black hole-black hole merger, LIGO and Virgo have gone on to make numerous discoveries, including the August 2017 first discovery of two neutron stars merging. When it came to generating detectable gravitational waves, there aren't a lot of options out there. Two neutron stars can do it, two black holes can do it, and the combo of a neutron star and a black hole, they are detectable too. 
A quick literature review was unable to find a paper on the detection of any existing black hole neutron star binary systems, although one 2005 paper led by Eric Fall postulated they should be very rare, with one being born only once per 10 million years or less. They also should only last for about 100 million years before they merge. This means they are rare and short-lived and number among the hardest things to observe. Although a paper from 2020 led by Debatri Chattupadhyaya indicates that the square kilometer array may be able to start detecting them if Meerkat doesn't find them first. But it turns out LIGO and Virgo wanted that gold star. That final detectable pair, the black hole neutron star combo, has been seen not once, but twice at the moment of their merger into an even bigger black hole. Royal Flush, that makes black hole black hole found in 2015, neutron star neutron star in 2017, and now black hole neutron star merger found in 2021. The two of these were seen in 10 days may seem a bit hard to fathom, but this is in part due to the ever improving abilities of the detectors and the fact that random events sometimes will occur one after the other. Now that LIGO and Virgo can detect these, we look forward to seeing more and more combos of more and more different sizes and orbits as these objects merge and shake the time and space continuum. After the break, We'll be back with a side journey to Mars before we continue today's theme of destruction with a look at asteroids and their habit of shaking our world. Stay tuned. We talk a lot about water on Mars here on The Daily Space. It's an important topic. With plans underway to send humans to the red planet, scientists and engineers are concerned about how to provide necessary resources for a prolonged mission. Water is heavy and fuel is expensive, making it better for everyone involved if water is already on Mars, accessible and relatively easy to make drinkable. Recently, there was research that came out that said the South Polar ice caps had liquid lakes of water underneath the surface. They were discovered with bright radar reflections taken using the Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface and Ionosphere Sounding, or MARSIS, an instrument aboard the ESA's Mars Express Orbiter. These lakes likely have a lot of salt dissolved in them, making them more briny than clear and not easily drinkable. Still, subsurface liquid water would be fantastic for crewed missions to be able to access all that necessary life-sustaining fluid even if it had to be purified first. But if there is one thing we know about space anywhere off our planet, it is not friendly to biological life. So before we send people off to a distant world, even one in our own solar system, we want to make absolutely certain that what we think is water is actually water. And a new research published this week in Geophysical Research Letters, a team of scientists led by Carver Beerson and including Planetary Science Institute's Dan Putzig Examine the data previously collected by MARSIS. Using a different analysis method than the previous paper, they concluded that, well, there are other materials that could explain that bright reflection. Put simply, uh, the previous method involved how a material responds to an electric field. That led to the conclusion that liquid water caused the bright reflection. The new paper looked instead at how much electrical current the material could carry, using ice sheets here on Earth as analogs for Mars's polar ice. And the results showed that the reflection could be due to clays, metallic minerals, or even salty ice. These results do not rule out the possibility of liquid water, mind you. They just mean that we cannot always make a confident decision based on one possible analytic method if there are other methods available. Think of it this way, just because you see the glint off of a rock in the distance doesn't mean you found gold. So before you bring all your mining equipment over, you want to make sure you have found the right mineral. Or, as Than reiterates, because water, particularly in a liquid form, is so important to sustaining life, seeking out where it may exist on Mars today or in the past is of paramount importance to astrobiological studies. 
Ensuring that we fully consider other possibilities for reported detections of liquid water is crucial to the scientific process. Now Pamela will be back in a moment to focus on how to survive on Earth, unlike the dinosaurs. It's almost asteroid day, everyone. Stay tuned. In 1908, in middle of nowhere, Siberia, a fairly large object streaked through the sky and exploded over the eastern Siberian taiga. This air blast is estimated to have flattened 80 million trees, killed countless reindeer and three humans. And it created a shockwave through the atmosphere that was detected all around the world. This was the Tunguska event. Tomorrow, our show will be highlighting the launches and history of rockets, so we're going to talk about that June 30th event today instead. Asteroid Day is a new UN-sanctioned yearly event held on the anniversary of that bad day in Siberia, and it is a day on which scientists and science communicators work to remind everyone that rocks can still fall out of the sky and kill. Tunguska isn't the only human-observed major event. For many of you watching now, the 2013 event in Chelyabinsk was a wake-up call to just how dangerous a 20-meter space rock can be. Streaking through the early morning sky and observed in security and dashboard cameras, that event included an explosion above the ground, a massive shockwave, and a fair amount of destruction. We are pleased to share that no reindeer are known to have been harmed and no deaths were reported. Now, the reason that these kinds of objects explode is they are either rocks or ice predominantly that are mixed with either ice or rocks. And when that ice gets hot, it melts and expands. And when you have expanding gas inside of something largely rocky, it explodes. And, and this is bad because it can flatten large areas. Now, it, depending on how things strike and where things strike, may be better or worse than the ground getting hit. Either way, we want to know about these things before they actually happen. And this is where the B612 Foundation comes in. Named after the asteroid of the Little Prince, 46610, which in hex is B612, uh, this society is out there looking to encourage research into how to defend ourselves. Missions like Dawn, Orex, and Hayabusa allow us to study asteroids, and future missions may help us learn how to move asteroids. Until we have that tech, however, we need to watch the asteroids to make sure we know when the next big one might be coming. Let's hope that day is far in the future. Until then, this has been The Daily Space. You can find more information on all our stories, including images, at dailyspace.org. As always, we're here thanks to the donations of people like you. If you like our content, please consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash CosmoQuestX. transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and it's already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. It all started with a vision to offer a client-driven experience with diligent attention to detail. As we celebrate our 12th anniversary here at YoMove, 
I understand that the only way we can enjoy success is through the generosity of others. Without our customers, our referral partners, and your move team, we couldn't have accomplished this amazing growth and had so many opportunities to make a lasting impact on our community. We are extremely proud of our management, our crews, and many friends we've met along the way. We look forward to providing our customers with superior service for many years to come. We are thrilled to celebrate 12 years in business here at Your Move. As a critical aspect of your operations, you need the right technology partner to provide you and your business the peace of mind of having reliable and efficient IT systems. In addition, with cyber threats, ransomware at an all-time high, adequate, continuous and proactive data protection for your business is an absolute must. Hi, this is Roland Parker with Impress Computer Solutions. We are experts in tailored IT solutions and professional 24-7 IT support services. We proactively monitor, maintain, manage, and protect your IT and data assets. Additionally, we have the know-how and horsepower to do the correct procuring of any and all computer systems or software your company may need. Having the correct IT infrastructure and not being able to operate safely and correctly is very expensive and can eventually destroy growth. So take a decisive step and call me today for a complimentary consultation at 281-647-9977 for your unique IT needs. I'm here to take you to a new frontier, the final frontier. In fact, you and I are going where no one has gone before. I'm Glenn Henderson, entrepreneur, success coach, and musician, and I want to personally invite you to take this journey with me in the pages of my best-selling new book, All I Need to Know About Success I Learned from Star Trek. We'll travel aboard the USS Enterprise, along with Captain James T. Kirk, Spock, and the finest crew in Starfleet. And we'll learn together about success principles, like how to work with a team and accomplish your goals, when to fight for what you believe, and when not to, and what your business really is, no matter what you do for a living. Beam aboard with me. My mission is your success. And I'll see you on the bridge. Live long and prosper. You've probably seen a lot about CBD on TV, in ads, emails, and even popping up around your towns. But do you ever wonder if it really helps, or is it just hype? I'm here to tell you that it works. And I'm standing here today because of this medicinal plant. I've helped thousands of Americans just like you by getting their health back and feeling great. I'm Marlise, founder of Indie Hemp Company. I'm a certified medical cannabis advisor, and I guide users and practitioners all over the country on how and why CBD works. We are designed to give you the private, personal guidance you need to see the results that so many people have been raving about. Because CBD isn't a one-dose-fits-all. Proper use and product recommendations are keys to success. And we only use the very best USDA certified organic products grown right here in the United States. So maybe it's better sleep, less stress, that pesky back pain or inflammation. Maybe it's focus, memory, or you're looking to find something natural where traditional medicine isn't helping. It's safe for all ages, pets, and yes, it's legal in every state. Start living your best life today with the benefits of a pure product and the advisement of an expert. 
contact us today. Hello everyone and welcome to The Daily Space. I am your host, Dr. Pamela Gay. And I am your host, Beth Johnson. And we are here to put science in your brain. Later on in the show, I'll be speaking with Dr. Nathaniel Putzig from the Planetary Science Institute about just what might be under Mars's south polar ice cap. We're looking for water and recent research says we found subsurface lakes of it. Dr. Putzig was part of another team that said, hold up, did we really? We'll chat with him about why it's important to examine all the possibilities. But first, let's look at the news. One of the most important science questions today may be, is there life on Mars? Early images from Mariner 4, 6 and 7 and 9 made it clear that Mars is a modern day desert and no cities or seas dot its surface. Subsequent experiments by the Viking landers are generally interpreted as indicating there isn't microbial life on Mars, at least in those locations. But the results of those experiments are still actively debated more than 40 years later. Since those early experiments, we've learned several important facts about Mars. It had a watery surface in the past. It has subsurface ice and possibly subsurface salt water. And and microbial life on Earth has figured out how to survive in Mars-like environments. There have also been confusing observations of methane made by Mars Curiosity rover. Methane is destroyed by sunlight over time, and any methane that is observed has to be freshly produced. Methane has two major sources, biology and geology. And we had thought Mars was both biologically dead and geologically dead. This methane detection indicates that either life, geologic activity related to magma and volcanism, or both exist. I personally am rooting for the or both. The reason these results are confusing is because there are extremely sensitive atmospheric sensors orbiting Mars that haven't been able to replicate these detections. There is every reason to believe both the orbiter and rover are working perfectly. So how can both be right? Turns out that measuring these gases is an energy intensive process. So the orbiting ExoMars trace gas orbiter with its solar panels was making its measurements during the day. Mars Curiosity with its radiothermal generator was taking its measurements at night when other instruments weren't active and the detector could have all its power to itself and new models from a team led by Christopher Webster. Scientists have shown that in the cool Martian night, the air is still and methane can build up near the surface, where Curiosity is sitting. During the day, the circulation of the atmosphere scatters that methane to undetectable levels. To prove this theory, the team had Curiosity do something new. It looked for methane during the Martian day, and it didn't find it. Over two days and one night, Curiosity repeatedly sampled methane, or at least sampled for methane. And during daylight, it wasn't there in sufficient amounts to be detected. This not only explains ExoMars' lack of detection, but it also reminds us methane is, somehow, seeping to Mars' surface regularly. Now we just need to sort out how. From clouds of methane on Mars, we now turn to clouds of mixed hot gases in a galaxy cluster. 
A favorite target for astrophotographers with large scopes, the LEO cluster, or a Bell 1367, is about 300 million light years from Earth. In 2017, astronomers taking images designed to reveal the faintest structures in the system found a small warm gas cloud. These observations were made with the 8-meter Subaru telescope in Hawaii. Follow-up surveys of this system with the orbiting XMM Newton scope determined the gas is hot, but not as hot as normal intracluster gas. It's also not distributed normally. Instead of being distributed throughout the cluster in a smooth distribution that is hottest and densest in the cluster center, this material is just coolly hanging out off-center. Its temperature is actually consistent with what is normally found inside a massive galaxy. And in a new paper in Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society and led by Chang Ji, researchers explain that this is likely a cloud of gas stripped out of a galaxy that has since journeyed on to other places. This is a cool new snapshot of cluster evolution. We knew clusters stripped galaxies of gas. We knew that gas got incorporated into the cluster gas. And now we know, well, we know this process takes enough time that sometimes, just sometimes, we get to see the gas without the galaxy. Galaxy clusters are part of the large scale structure of our universe. Over the past 13 billion years or so, what started as an almost smooth distribution of matter has evolved to a Swiss cheese of walls, threads, and clusters of matter defined by the gravitational pull of more massive regions on the now emptying voids of lower density regions. It has long been thought that galaxies should stream along the walls and threads toward the highest density regions. And now, for the first time, a galaxy has been caught doing just that. Radio, optical, and x-ray observations together describe an active galaxy that has two large jets streaming out of its central supermassive black hole and getting bent to stream behind the galaxy as it moves through the sky. According to study lead author Angie Veronica, the jets of matter are streaming out behind it like the braids of a running girl. It's always amazing when the science is right and the images are weird and awesome. After a break, we'll be back to look at science that we may or may not have right. The science of the expansion of the universe. Stay tuned. One of the weird things that can happen as measurements get more precise is unknown errors crop up. Need two pieces of pipe to be the same length? Well, in building my old house, that would call for a pencil, a ruler, a fancy blade used only with goggles and a bit of trepidation. And those pieces might differ by a millimeter here or there. But heck, the house was built in 1893, and anything better than a centimeter, I'll take it. Now, if you are building something for LIGO to measure gravitational waves, Digital calipers and lasers are likely to be involved, and differences may be measured in wavelengths of light. This means a bunch of pipes I see is all pretty much the same size to LIGO engineers may all appear pretty different. And it may turn out that the differences between cutting on the inside of the pencil line and the outside of the pencil line can lead to more sensitive measurements revealing two different sets of lengths of pipe. In trying to measure the expansion rate of our universe, we've used a lot of different rulers, and we've even strung them together awkwardly since no one tool can measure the full distance back to the beginning of the universe. Any issues in those rulers can lead to errors that get multiplied across everything else as hard as these measurements are to make. Our ability to make accurate measurements has been getting better and better, and over the past several years, we've started to notice that one set of measurements, those that look at the cosmic background light, yield one set of values, and measurements that look at nearby and middle distance stars and supernovae appear to have a slightly different value, and those values don't quite match. Now, a review paper by Wendy Friedman, one of the scientific heroes of these kinds of measurements. That paper reveals that it looks like 
while our cosmic microwave background based measurements seem to be more like the high precision digital caliper measurements we'd like, the measurements from the stars and supernovae may have been made with not entirely accurate rulers that added errors. Specifically, we calibrate our supernova distance measurements using red giant stars and Cepheid variable stars, and she finds that improving understanding of red giants is shifting the distance scale just a bit, and the direction of that change brings supernova measurements in line with cosmic microwave background measurements. Now, a similar error hasn't yet been found in Cepheid variable stars, but Friedman points out that those measurements could easily be affected by dust that exists in the vicinity of these young stars. Simply adding a bit of dust and the changes in apparent brightness that that dust could cause, that's enough to also bring things into alignment. I'm sure this won't be the final word on this science. If the discrepancy is real, it would indicate there's new physics that could lead to a Nobel Prize. And let's face it, folks, scientists are willing to chase Nobel Prizes into dark scientific alleys. For now, though, I will actually sleep a bit better knowing there probably won't be any weird new physics to complicate our universe. After the break, we'll be back to talk Mars with Nathaniel Putzig. Stay tuned. Earlier this week, we brought you a story about how a new analysis of bright reflections found in ESA's Mars Express Marsis data revealed the possibility that what was once thought to be liquid water beneath Mars's south polar ice caps may actually be some other substance like clay or salty ice. New possibilities are on the table, and while they do not exclude the existence of liquid water lakes, they do mean that we need to use caution before accepting the result. After all, a crewed mission to Mars will depend on Martian re water resources. With me today is Dr. Than Putzig of the Planetary Science Institute. Than is a co-author on a new paper published in AGU's Geophysical Research Letters. He is also a senior scientist here at PSI and works on, well, um, pretty much every Mars mission out there, it seems. Thank you and welcome, for, welcome, Than. Hi, Beth. Thank you very much. You've been on this show before. Thank you for coming back on it. That says something really nice about us. <laughs> yeah, sure does. I um, really appreciate your uh, giving some airtime to uh, the work that we've been doing. So how did you become involved in this particular research? Well, so I'm involved with um, the uh, shallow radar instrument on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter um, and have used that data extensively to uh, analyze the polar caps of Mars and other features. Um, one of the things that we're doing a lot is looking for buried ice in the mid-latitudes, for example, as a resource for future human missions. Um, and um, I've also been involved in studies of the uh, South Polar Cap in particular. Um, with the, our instrument, the shallow radar, we don't see through to the base of the uh, polar cap in this region where the Marsis instrument on Mars Express has uh, detected these very strong returns. So can you explain the, the original result uh, from the paper, the, the one prior that says that this is liquid sure. water? How did they come up with that conclusion? Right, so um, they actually noticed quite early in the mission that they, they seem to be getting some strong um, reflections off the uh, what appeared to be the base of the South Polar uh, ice cap on Mars. Um, but there were some issues in trying to understand exactly uh, what the data was telling them. Um, part of the problem was the onboard processing of the data, their standard collection methods, um, summed together an awful lot of data all at once. So it sort of smeared out the results they were getting. <clears throat> so uh, after many years, um, they, uh, well, after this first uh, uh, hint that they were getting these strong returns, they changed the way they were actually acquiring the data. 
um, to not sum it together quite so much before sending it back to the Earth. Um, and so they had this uh, better, uh, more finely sampled result. Um, and it, uh, it showed that on repeated observations of this, these particular locations, um, they get an extremely consistent, strong reflection from the, the base of the ice. Um, in their uh, analysis of it, they found that the reflection from the base was actually stronger than the reflection that you get at the surface of the ice. Um, and this is pretty unusual and um, speaks to there being something special going on at the, the base of the uh, polar ice cap. So they determined that, well, they, they I don't know if they determined, but they, they said that what they think it is, is liquid water, subsurface liquid water lakes. So your team is saying, well, maybe, maybe not. What, what does your work, how did your work change the possibilities? Sure. Okay. So let me explain a little bit more about their um, analysis. Um, so effectively what they were doing was um, comparing the, uh, the strength of that reflection from the base with that of uh, other uh, materials, say, that have been studied in the laboratory or elsewhere on, on Mars. And um, using the, uh, an estimation of the, the so-called permittivity, this is um, the extent to which a material um, is polarized by an electric field. Um, so they can get a measure of that permittivity from the radar data. Um, and looking at materials, di different materials that have uh, these values of permittivity, um, in their estimation, the, the only reasonable explanation was liquid water. Um, there are certainly other materials that could have these very uh, uh, high permittivities, such as metals, um, but you know the presence of metals at the base of the uh, polar cap wasn't isn't something really expected to be there. Um, so they held up you know liquid water as the most likely explanation. Um, however, um, there's uh, more than one way to kind of skin the cat with the radar data. Um, so in addition to estimating primitivity, one can use the data to get an estimate of so-called uh, conductivity, the electrical conductivity. And so this is you know, the extent to which a material will allow electrical current to pass through it. Um, just, you know, it's a right. slight difference from the polarization me method. Um, and so, um, so what you're saying is, is the two things used different methods? Different methods of analyzing the, the data's result, yes. Um, so okay. different measures from the same data set. All right. Well, I want to talk to you about some of the, some more of the possibilities and where we're going with this data, but we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Great. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, with me right now is Dr. Nathaniel Putzig from the Planetary Science Institute, and we are talking about water on Mars, as always, it seems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so, Dan, what is what is what does this result mean for the the prospects of liquid water on Mars? Does this change anything? Um, I I think it opens up you know more questions um, that uh, you know that need to to be further considered. Um, one of the difficulties here, of course, is that this uh, detection is below a kilometer and a half of ice um, near the south pole of Mars. Um, so it's pretty inaccessible for direct sampling. So what are you, what are you working on now? What's, what's next? Um, so I, I am uh, presently, I, I, you know, I mentioned that um, the, uh, one of the things that I do is work with uh, these radar data sets and, uh, and other data to analyze the mid-latitudes of Mars. Um, so, you know, these are more accessible for humans. And in fact, there's, a, you know, big plans afoot to um, send a new spacecraft to Mars uh, called the Mars Ice Mapper. 
Um, and so we're very actively using the radar data sets to look for buried deposits of ice in the mid-latitudes um, where people would be able to the, uh, access them in some of the first missions with humans. Um, so this has been very exciting to be involved in this work. Um, in, in addition, you know, this ice is of interest not just for a resource, but as an astrobiological target. Um, that, that ice may contain uh, ex existing life uh, or remnants of past life. Um, and so it actually does tie in a bit with the, the potential detection of water ice below the South Polar Cat, which is, again, a, you know, a very interesting astrobiological, uh, uh, well, it has implications for astrobiology, um, since that liquid water could potentially sustain life. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Than. This has been a great discussion, and I look forward to having you on the show again. I'm, I'm sure we will with whatever new results you, you have out. So thank you once again for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk, to talk with you about this. This has been The Daily Space. As a reminder, we are taking next week off. Want more of us? Check out CosmoQuest.org and get tickets for CosmoQuesticon, our 80s space party that will take place July 16 through 18. You can find more information on all our stories, including images, at DailySpace.org. As always, we're here thanks to the donations of generous people like you. If you like our content, please consider joining our Patreon at Patreon.com slash CosmoQuestX. Hi, I'm Mike Mogell, the CEO of Clean Sweep Office Cleaning. A clean and disinfected space is essential to keeping your customers and your staff healthy, safe, and productive while preventing the spread of COVID-19. Clean Sweep Office Cleaning, with more than 20 years experience in janitorial, restaurant, post-construction, and floor maintenance cleaning. We really make it shine. We are focused on quality cleaning and wellness in our customer spaces. Our team is professionally trained to ensure not a spot is missed, and we use products that are safe for your property and your people. Our services are tailored to your individual needs and include expert floor care, dusting, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, detailing, glass cleaning, and deep disinfecting. Our experienced team is here to make your office as comfortable and clean as possible. Visit our website at cleansweeteofficecleaning.com or call us today at 832 689-7996. Now that's a clean sweep. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Una de las formas más seguras de invertir tu dinero en los Estados Unidos es en bienes raíces, especialmente con la inestabilidad que existe en México. Soy María Rebollar, experta en bienes y raíces certificada por el estado de Texas bajo la administración del presidente Biden. Estados Unidos está ofreciendo visas para ciudadanos mexicanos interesados en invertir en bienes raíces en ciudades como Houston. Propiedades como esta lujosa mansión con acabados de primer nivel a minutos del centro de Houston pudieran calificarte para estos programas de inversión. Es tiempo de asegurar su capital, proteger a su familia y crear un patrimonio sólido en la economía más afluente del mundo. Llámame directamente 
en los Estados Unidos y permítame ayudarle hoy a crear un futuro sólido en este país. Buying, selling, or renting a property is an important step that will impact your life and the life of your loved ones. In fact, research shows that having an experienced realtor ensures a better pricing, selling, buying, or renting a property. Hi, my name is Dean Investor with Greenwood King Properties. If you want to buy, sell, or rent a property, call me. I have the resources and strong know-how to navigate your transaction with ease. At the same time, when necessary, I can perform market evaluations and assessments, make recommendations for any staging or renovations needed to make your property shine, and anything else needed to list your property and sell it as fast as possible. Additionally, I'm a master certified negotiator and can provide several financing solutions. The goal is to sell your house fast and for the highest price possible, or find you your dream home and negotiate the best deal. Leave the selling buying or renting of your property to me. Take a strong step, reach out to me today so I can handle all your real estate needs. Coming up next, The Chris Baker Show with Chris Baker. Only on Now Media Television. I'm a health insurance guru. I help individuals, families, small business owners, and self-employed individuals find the best health insurance to fit their needs and budget. I'm Elaine Tillman Dietz with Tillman Health Insurance. Protect you and your family's health with the right insurance coverage. Unexpected medical costs from illness or accident can add mental and financial stress on you and your family that could last for years. That's why when it comes to choosing health insurance, it's important to get the right coverage for you and your family. Choosing insurance can be confusing. With so many options, it's hard to know if you're getting the right plan for your situation at the right cost. I simplify the process and answer all your health insurance questions. I compare policies and prices so you know you're getting the best possible deal. We can even look at supplemental vision or dental plans to see which ones might save you money. Every step of the way, I am dedicated to you and your family. I listen to your needs and help guide you to the right solutions. Together, we'll find a way to maximize your coverage and minimize out-of-pocket expenses. I'm Elaine Tillman Dietz. Protect your health and start saving money on health insurance today. Call me at 979-533-8990 and let me help you find the right coverage. It all started with a vision to offer a client-driven experience with diligent attention to detail. As we celebrate our 12th anniversary here at Your Move, I understand that the only way we can enjoy success is through the generosity of others. Without our customers, our referral partners, and Your Move team, we couldn't have accomplished this amazing growth and had so many opportunities to make a lasting impact on our community. We are extremely proud of our management, our crews, and many friends we've met along the way. We look forward to providing our customers with superior service for many years to come. We are thrilled to celebrate 12 years in business here at Your Move. Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people. For over 20 years, I have fought for people like you. I know what you're going through. I understand the uncertainty, the stress, and the fear of being charged with a crime. And I know how much a criminal charge, including possibly prison, weighs on you. And I know how important your case is to you and your loved ones. You want a lawyer who knows how to handle your case, who aggressively fights for you and who treats your case as importantly as if it was his own. I've dedicated my career to defending cases like yours. 
My greatest honor has been the recognition of my peers and clients. In 2019, my peers elected me as president of the Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association, and my clients have written several testimonials and reviews, which I encourage you to read. Let's see how I can help you. Call me today for a free consultation. looking for gourmet ice cream in the Houston area? Tarascos is your go-to for handmade artisan ice cream and Mexican paletas. Tarascos is a gourmet ice cream shop that uses handmade processes with 100% natural ingredients for the preparation of ice cream, designed to satisfy the most demanding palates. Whether you like pistachio, rum and raisins, Nutella, flan, passion fruit, tres leches or even tequila, we have the widest variety of ice creams in Texas with more than 70 unique flavors, including gluten-free options. Tarascos has the solution for your dessert needs, whether it is for gatherings, events, business meetings, or simply to satisfy your cravings. Our handmade ice creams and Mexican paletas are an ideal gourmet touch for your restaurant, hotel, or venue. If you're craving for delicious and unique flavors, Try Tarasco's ice cream. Work and automobile-related accidents always happen at the worst possible time. These painful injuries resulting from those accidents usually hinder the patient, making him or her unable to work and perform the simplest of activities. Addressing these injuries fast is critical to achieve the best possible recovery. Hi, I'm Dr. Shea Stark with Stark Chiropractic and Sports, and I have been successfully treating patients with car and work-related injuries for over six years. My goal is to create a customized treatment plan to restore my patients to a pain-free state and allow them to recover as fast as possible with non-surgical and non-invasive methods. Take a decisive and strong step to a restored and pain-free life and schedule your consultation. Remember, your injuries will only get worse if they aren't treated quickly and effectively. Are you aware your clients will decide to do business with you and your company within 50 seconds of browsing your website, your social media, and your digital footprint? In addition, your company's review play a major role in your clients' and potential clients' retention and future referrals. Hi, I am Gary Santana with Big Creative Services, a full digital marketing agency. From website development to custom online marketing, we have the marketing knowledge and cutting-edge technologies to meet all your company's online marketing needs. Also, we are well aware of current trends and effective SEO technologies as well as cutting-edge tools to bring leads to your company fast, efficiently and cost-effectively. At Big Creative Services, our job is to help your company sell either online or in person. Take a strong step, combine our powerful tools with your company's products and services and increase your revenue 